All right, in this step-by-step -step ECG interpretation, we're going to take a look at a wandering atrial pacemaker. I know, sounds like somebody's traveling. Well, we'll talk about how it's wandering. So let's dive into it. Let's take a look first. Is it a readable strip? And our answer here appears to be yes. I can identify all the different waves. P waves, present or absent? Well, this is a P wave. This does look like a P wave, but it looks like it's inverted. This is a P wave. It's a little tough to tell whether or not this here is a P wave, but you can tell that it kind of goes up a little bit. So this almost looks like it's a P wave compared to this where there's probably a P wave missing here, and then we come back into a P wave. So yes, P waves are present. Now don't jump ahead. So we want to now see, is there a P wave for every QRS? P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS. Yeah, we're missing a QR, we're missing a P wave here. Okay. P wave for every QRS. So is there a P wave for every QRS? And the answer here is no. Okay, so we're missing one. Okay. Is there a QRS for every P? So there's a QRS and a P. There's not a QRS and a P here. There's a QRS and a P, QRS and a P, QRS and a P, and a QRS and a P. So our answer here is going to be no again. So we have one beat that is kind of messing us up. So let's go ahead and erase so that we can come in here and measure some things. All right. So now we're going to get our calipers. And we bring our calipers in, and let's find here. It's really tough to tell. So we're going to take one here, and we're going to move this one down to here. Okay, let's move this and see. Wrong moving. It does seem like it wants to fall in alignment there. Okay, so it's not really... A regular issue there so we don't have a real regular P wave so it looks like it's variable but in this case if we take a look here we're at 0.4 this one here looks about the same maybe a little shorter that one's okay and that one's okay. So I'm going to say where I can tell that there's a P wave, even if I come here, you can see that it does appear that the PR interval is consistent, but our P waves are not regular. It doesn't appear that they're following um, almost all the normal complexes, but let's take a look at that again. Let's see, maybe if we do it this way. We go right in that area there. We're going to move this. It does there. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to say that um, we do have a consistent where it is. It is consistent, but, and we have a PR interval of 0.16, and it is regular. Um, yes, when there is a P wave, P wave is visible. It is there. So we take a look at something like this because we're missing that. Um, you know, we're actually, let me change that to no. So therefore, we're going to have to come in here and say that, well, you know what? One, two, three, four, five. So it probably looks like an atrial rate of about 50 in a ventricular rate. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, ventricular rate of 60. And while we're in here, let's measure out some things here with our calipers. And if we move these down. Yeah, hey, look, it is regular. So we have a QRS that is regular. Whoops, I'm sorry, wrong spot. So it is regular. And our QRS duration. Just judging by this real quick, it looks like it's about 
yep, I got about two blocks there. So we are going to make that QRS duration at 0.08. So <clears throat> one of the things that as we go down through here, you're like, okay, well, what, what the heck is going on here? Like, I, you know, as you're explaining this, you're even coming in and not doing the best at, at um, trying to fill in the roles. Well, the roles here kind of get a little, I don't want to say skewed, but trying to fill in these things sometimes because when you take a look at this, are you saying that that is a P wave and it looks like there's a P wave that's missing here? Well, those two don't look like this one. And this one looks like it's inverted. Okay, so a role for a wandering atrial pacemaker, okay, is that you have to have um, at least three different P waves. Okay, and those should be consistent. Okay, so if they're consistent, you can see here that there's, there's, we can say that this is a P wave, so there's one, there's two, there's three. Okay, there's a one for bonus. So you have to have at least, so this is an at least three different P waves, and this is in re reference to their configuration. Okay, so if there's three, at least three of them in a row, we call this a wandering atrial pacemaker. So what is happening with this? Well, let's go back over here. Okay, so when I come back over here, okay, we're going to remember or hopefully recall that normally we have our internodal pathways. Okay. Now, most of the time, what we have talked about is that there are just normal PR, I'm sorry, there's a sinus sinus SA node that sits up here. And then we kind of just say, you know, there are other atrial pacemakers that do exist. We don't really get into them a whole lot. So what we know is that a in here is going to be different pacemakers. Okay, so these little green marks are going to indicate that these could be other pacemakers. So what happens is maybe the SA node fires once and you get this nice P wave like that. If there is something that is maybe down here that is firing and you may get an inverted P wave. If there is something that is firing maybe to, you know, it's firing over here, you may get something that's a little lower. So everything is going to give you a different P wave depending on where that site is at. Okay, remember we're measuring electrical activity. So as a result, they're saying that this pacer, this wandering, so it's wandering in the atria. Okay, so I just kind of added this one in here of in wandering atrial pacemaker. So what's happening? Multiple pacemaker sites in the atria are firing. And when they fire, we're seeing the P wave. Now what's happening, and you could ask yourself, well, why isn't the ventricles freaking out with something like this? This is the cool thing, or I guess the... Um, I don't want to say the stupid part of the heart, but the heart reacts. So the ventricles are reacting in this case to there's a stimulus. So they know that their job is to fire. And if you come back up here and take a look at the T waves, it represents the fact that they're ready to go. So this means that the atri I'm sorry, that the um, ventricles are ready. So when they receive a stimulus, they respond. They don't really care where it comes from. They just know that there's a stimulus that's coming from above and therefore they're going to react. So this is why we have a wandering atrial pacemaker. And our next thing we'll take a look at for wandering atrial pacemakers is going to be pretty much the same thing, only we're going to speed it up and we're going to make it faster. And that's when people will call it a multifocal atrial tachycardia. I know really big fancy words for essentially the same thing, but we're making it faster. 
Okay, we'll see you on the next one.